So I think that for people who are coming from a healthcare background and want to understand about AI and machine learning, it can be a bit overwhelming initially because you don't know, um, you know, what should you learn first? Do you need to know how to code? Do you need to have good maths? Um, how much did you know about these machine learning algorithms? And what sorts of ways are, are useful for you to actually kind of contribute your clinical and machine learning skills to the area? So I think it can be quite tricky to know where to begin. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I would recommend as an approach if you're coming from a healthcare background and you don't really know too much about machine learning, but it's something that you're kind of interested in and want to know more. So I like to divide machine learning in healthcare into four main areas, and those are the kind of underlying maths fundamentals, um, the coding and practical implementation of machine learning algorithms, the machine learning theory itself, so what the algorithms are, how they work, and fourthly about the kind of current state and some of the nuances about how machine learning is being applied to healthcare. So I used to actually recommend that people learn about all of these four different areas. But now I actually think, you know, it really depends what you want to do. Because there's different ways that you can combine machine learning and healthcare. Uh, it might be that you want to use it in academic research. It might be that you want to work at a startup or start your own company. It might be that you want to work in public health. Uh, it might be that you want to do consulting. There's a number of different ways that you can combine the two. And I think really the extent at which you learn these four different domains really depends on what exactly you want to do. So my broad advice for somebody coming from a healthcare background who wants to understand machine learning would be to first start learning about machine learning theory. Uh, and that's learning about some of the techniques that are used, understanding broadly what are those techniques and how do they work, and also understanding the different performance metrics and the ways that we quantify the performance of machine learning models. And I've made a couple of videos in this video series kind of covering each of those in part, um, and I'll leave links in the description below if you haven't already watched those. But as well as those videos, some other resources that I would recommend are firstly Brilliant, uh, which is a website, it has a load of really useful tutorials on computer science and neural networks and machine learning principles. I'd also recommend the website Towards Data Science, which has a lot of really great articles on AI, machine learning, their techniques, um, as well as how they're being applied to healthcare. And you can just Google different techniques and read the blogs, and that's a kind of quite a good base level introduction. You'll usually be able to find an article kind of pitched at the level you're currently at, and it gives you a pretty good introduction. There's then a couple of follow-on resources that I'd recommend, which start to get a bit more technical and are generally aimed at people with more of a maths and computer science background. And those are, firstly, Andrew Ung's machine learning course. This is done by pretty much everybody who kind of gets serious about machine learning, has probably taken this course at some point. And then there is more recently another course, which is AI for Medicine, uh, which is released by the same group. And again, it kind of goes into a lot more detail about how AI can be applied to healthcare. Um, the caveat with these, as I said, is that they're much more um, tricky uh, kind of from a math point of view and computing as well. They do have programming exercises. So what I would recommend for those is um, maybe trying them, but there'll be parts where maybe you don't really fully understand the maths. So then you can go away and read maths about them and kind of build up your maths knowledge that way. Uh, and then also in terms of the programming exercises, Either you don't do the programming exercises, I think that's fine. Like you can just watch the videos and get a pretty good idea of it. If you do want to do the programming exercises, then I would recommend just spending some time focused on actually studying before doing the exercises. Um, and there's various different courses I'd recommend. So things like doing an introductory course on Python uh, or a Python for data science course. And after having covered some of the machine learning theory in the videos that I've recorded and some of the other resources that I recommended, then what I would recommend is going away and reading papers that apply machine learning to healthcare. And I think there's certain like key papers that I'd recommend, and I've written a blog post about what I would say uh, are kind of like the first landmark papers to read. Um, so I'd recommend going and reading those. If you're not too sure how to read them, I've recorded a previous video where I just outline a framework for reading these sorts of papers. Um, and what's nice about those is you can kind of just approach it as a learning exercise. So you can you can read the paper. If you don't really understand it, and you're seeing all these terms maybe you don't recognize, you can then go away and read about those terms, um, come back, read the paper, and then understand it. And every time you read another paper, read these different terms and kind of build up this understanding uh, after having read like five, 10 papers, you'll get to the point where you can actually read these papers and you understand the techniques and it kind of gives you like a solid prompt to build that foundation. And I think the advantage of reading these landmark papers is as well as learning how to read the papers, you'll then also learn, you know, what some of the states of the art, what some of the really big uh, and exciting papers that have been published in the area and give you a really an idea of where a lot of the potential of machine learning in healthcare is. So a couple of comments on coding and on maths. Um, in my opinion, coding is not essential. Uh, this is maybe a controversial opinion, but I do know some senior researchers who are doing some really amazing research applying machine learning to healthcare who have never written a line of code in their life. So 
I think if you want to kind of contribute, you don't necessarily need to learn how to code because you're going to be collaborating with people who do. If you're in an academic research group, there'll be machine learning engineers and data scientists who are doing that side of things. If you're in a company, there'll be other people doing that as well. I think the main argument for learning to code is that it kind of gives you some insight into what the process looks like and the sorts of things that you need to consider when you're making these models. So therefore, when you talk to people who are actually coding the models within your team, you'll be kind of able to relate to them more easily. But I, I do think it's not, it's not essential to be able to code in order to do that. I think you can get a lot of that insight. Otherwise, I mean, if you have the time and the interest, definitely by all means learn how to code. And I think it can be useful for other things because it can you know, enable you to make websites and to build apps that then could be useful as well, perhaps in like a non-machine learning context. But if you're specifically focused on machine learning in healthcare, I don't think it's essential to really kind of go deep into that. That being said, I personally have spent a lot of time learning how to code. Uh, it's something that I really enjoy and I do try and use those skills kind of outside of machine learning settings as well. So if you do have an inclination towards learning how to code, I don't think it's gonna be a waste of time. I think it's just, it's not essential to get involved in machine learning in healthcare. If you do want to learn how to code, then I would recommend just starting with some courses on, let's say Python is probably the most popular language, um, doing those courses and then as soon as possible, just try and do projects. Uh, because I think projects is where you actually then try and use what you've learned. When you're doing the courses, you kind of learn some of the syntax and some of the rules, but you don't really know uh, actually how to then use that. Uh, so you really need to build up those skills by actually then going on and working on projects. If you're looking for projects and you're not really sure what to do, then I've recorded a series of um, coding for medicine tutorials where basically uh, we take different kind of aspects of code and we learn how to use them and apply them by applying them to useful medical problems. So again, I'll leave a link to those in the description below as well. And then in terms of the maths, my recommendation would be to learn as much as you need to know in order to understand the techniques. So it's not essential to have like a really deep grounding in maths. Um, I think statistics is really useful to be able to understand how um, these models are being applied and to be able to kind of assess their performance. But you'll often be recommended to understand linear algebra and calculus, like multivariate calculus, because that's how the models, uh, that's how these techniques work. But in my opinion, you only really need to know those areas in enough detail to be able to understand the algorithms themselves. In terms of resources, so Brilliant again has loads of fantastic classes on maths. Uh, there's also Khan Academy is fantastic um, and has a lot of really great videos and is definitely worth working through. And then if you wanna go a little bit more into it, then there's this pretty great course on Coursera called uh, Maths for Machine Learning. It's run by Imperial College and that's definitely a worthwhile investment. Um, and it is more specifically targeted towards the areas of maths that you need to know for machine learning. If you want to get deeper into it, then there are some really great statistics textbooks. Um, the first I would recommend is Introduction to Statistical Learning with R by James. And then there's another textbook by uh, someone called Wasserman. Um, so those would probably be the first two that I'd recommend. But the Wasserman one's a bit more complex and does have a lot more kind of maths involved as well. So coming back to machine learning more generally, um, there's a couple of resources that I would recommend for uh, keeping up to date with the area and kind of building up this knowledge. Uh, one of those is Eric Topol. So he's written a really great book called Deep Medicine. Uh, he's also tweets a lot about research papers and kind of shares some really great articles um, and, and tweets there. There's a weekly email list called Dr. Penguin, which sends out um, the top machine learning research papers that are published each week. So that's quite good to subscribe to and just see you know, what sort of work has been done at the moment, um, get an idea of some of the trends. And there's also a blog by someone called Luke Oakden Rayner, which I really think is a fantastic blog. Um, he is a radiologist uh, and a PhD student in AI applied to radiology. And he just shares these really great blog posts that break down a lot of the kind of very, very relevant areas of machine learning and what's happening at the moment um, and how things are being applied. And those are just really um, kind of educational, but also quite entertaining read as well. So probably those are the top resources I would recommend for then getting some of the more specific details about machine learning in healthcare. And to be honest, I think the best way to really learn about the area is just to get involved. So whether that's try and join a research group, try and join a startup, um, just try and work on projects that are applying machine learning to healthcare and learn in the process of doing. I think it's easy to get this kind of overwhelm of, you know, I don't really know anything about machine learning, but I kind of want to get involved in it and then not really knowing where to start. I think if you can find a research group, just join in with them, or if you can find a startup and just kind of try and contribute your services, then uh, that's a really great way to, to then gradually build that, um, build that understanding. And I definitely found in my personal experiences, being in that kind of environment was, was a really big thing. I think I started out with doing various different online courses and I kind of, you know, I persevered, I got through them and I, I built up like a reasonable understanding of machine learning. But it was actually when I then first started working at a startup um, and there were some other doctors there who, you know, were like several years ahead of me in terms of their understanding of machine learning and, um, you know, who could code and all this sorts of thing. And, and then that, you know, really was 
was a very useful experience for me because I could learn so much from them. Uh, every time I'd go out for like lunch with them and I'd just pick their brains and try and understand what's relevant, what should I learn about, what sort of courses should I take next. There's just a lot to be said for being in that kind of environment where there's other people giving you all this kind of feedback and great advice on you know what to do next. But yeah, those are some of my thoughts about if I was just starting again, how I would go about learning about machine learning and how it applies to healthcare. Um, it's definitely not kind of like a definitive guide, but that's probably what my you know impression is at the moment. I'm always open to changing it uh, in the future, but um, yeah, that's, that's kind of like what I would recommend at the moment. If you're on the fence about whether or not you want to learn about machine learning and applying it to healthcare, I did a previous video where I explored this in much greater depth. But in short, I would say, you know, I highly recommend it. I think uh, it's, for me, it's been a really enjoyable process of learning about this. Um, it's been very interesting. I feel like I've contributed to some projects that I think have a lot of potential to uh, have a positive clinical impact. Uh, and I feel like I'm in a pretty good position kind of professionally now being able to have a pretty good grounding in both healthcare and machine learning. Um, so I'm really glad with the investment that I made and hopefully if you decide to go into it, then I think you'll really enjoy it and be able to contribute to some really exciting projects as well. I think the key thing is just to get started. Um, just throw yourself into it, take an online course or get involved in a project and just gradually learn from there. Um, you know, you don't need to have like a kind of concrete end goal in mind, um, just enjoy the process you know, learn about it and see where it takes you. If you watch this video as part of my series on machine learning for healthcare, then I hope you really enjoyed the series. Um, I hope, you know, it was very helpful. You got a lot out of it and you're now kind of really excited to go and work on machine learning project. If you just came across this video otherwise, then uh, I have recorded a kind of nine, 10 part video series on machine learning for healthcare, where I try and outline, you know, all the things I think that you should know as a foundation of machine learning in healthcare. I definitely recommend if you're interested then checking out this full series of videos. But either way, let me know how you get on. I'll be really interested to hear the kinds of things you work on. I'll leave my email in the description below so uh, feel free to drop me an email and you know let me know or ask any questions that you have as always thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video